Welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. I have a pretty short video for you today, just a quick update of uh, what I've been working on this week. Uh, a lot of it's been kind of moving stuff here and there, nothing really too interesting to watch on video, but uh, I did start to hook up a new VFD to run, the, a dedicated VFD to run the, uh, the air compressor, the big Quincy air compressor, so I think I'll start you off with that and just show you a couple other things that we've got going on here uh, in the shop, some things that I'm doing, some things that my son's doing, and uh, hopefully that'll uh, keep you guys, keep your curiosity peaked for the week. So uh, we'll check out what we're working on. Just trying to get parameters set up on the new to me Yunyang um, VFD. This is a four kilowatt unit. I've got it running with input from the pressure sensor, which should kick it down to, um, a lower frequency when it approaches 150 psi but what i can't figure out is it's running 50 hertz even though i got all the parameters set for 60 so i'm a little confused by that i'm going to see if it does change speed at the appropriate set points this is a zero and 10 volt reference and then the there's a resistor network where the uh, resistor values get switched in and out and the return value is the input speed, but that's reading 10 volts, so that should be a full 60 hertz right now. So we're at about 100 PSI and uh, it needs to get up to about 125 to 140 to kick it into the lower RPM. My son bought a denailer. This was a special order from Lowe's. And it basically uh, shoots the nails out of flooring. It works really well. He bought some used tongue and groove oak flooring, really cheap from a guy up in uh, Pennsylvania, stored in a barn, so it's nice and dry. And uh, he's been to pulling the nails out of it. What's in the trailer has yet to be done. So he's been running his little nailer off, denailer off the small compressor while we're getting the big one up and running. But, um, you know, back in the day, the select flooring used to be like 16 feet long. These are, you know, anywhere between, I'd say, four and eight feet. So it's better than the packs you get these days. Well, should not have kicked out, so something is faulting with the VFD. I assume that's an overcurrent error, so I'm going to uh, take a look and see if I can remedy that. Well, the motor is barely warm to the touch, so the overcurrent is something that is, I think, perceived rather than actual because. Uh, I don't have this shiv combination set up to where this should be really taxing the capabilities of the motor at 150 PSI. So further tweaks are necessary for this setup. The finished throat plate for the table saw, I have a hole that I rounded the edges off so I could lift that in and out as necessary. It is a snug fit and I've had to adjust it a couple of times because it's a acclimating to the humidity here in the shop, which is un, unconditioned, and the wood keeps swelling. I have a feeling when I put it in the um, conditioned shop up on the hill, it's gonna get a little bit looser, so I don't wanna take any more material off that. I have a light coat of uh, CRC metal, um, metal saver on the top of the table, which means it's a slight bit oily, but it's keeping it from rusting. And you can see I put it on the uh, freshly turned mystery steel, the low background steel. And that has been keeping that very well protected because that's, you know, right off the lathe. And then I also did the Minotoyo height stand and the tabletop of the Rockwell three-quarter inch shaper. The Rockwell half inch shaper, I didn't get the top coated quite quickly enough and I got a little bit of flash rust on that 
Uh, no biggie. I will clean that off and get it uh, coated a little bit better. Did a little bit of rearranging of the shop and I have uh, a tooling cabinet out here next to the granite table. This can actually help me protect the edge of the granite table a little bit and protect my head from banging into the corner of that which does pro uh, project a little bit beyond the, the edge of the table. So unfortunately still using a horizontal surface as a storage area. I've got to get out of that habit. But um, you know, just been trying to get things arranged in the shop and make use of the space. Move some things out, like the table saw, which is ready on the pallet jack to move out. We have a nice uh, clear area here. We will be bringing in an even bigger saw, and I will set it up um, only to sell it, which is uh, the Beach 18-inch table saw, and the Rockwell 12-inch, 12, 12 to 14-inch will go in its place. Ended up using that little pipe that's attached to the side to hold the miter gauge. I don't know if that's what it was made for, but it works in my case, so if it works, I'm not going to complain. These brackets are for the auxiliary side table, which comes out probably another uh, three and a half to four feet to allow you to cross cut longer pieces. And then there is an outfeed table. I don't know, maybe the side table is about 18 inches and the outfeed table is the, is the longer one. I don't know exactly how they had those arranged. I'm going to have to see what, uh, how that was set up. I have the outfeed tables attached over here. It looks like the way this bigger one is configured. Um, well, I don't know. I just, I don't know. One's for the side, one's for the back. <laughs> and then there's a leg set, two leg sets to support the outboard end of these. My son has another bin full of shorter pieces from an, another job. I think he got all these for free. And you always need shorter uh, flooring pieces, so he's going to be denailing these after he gets all the longer ones taken care of and I think a few of them on the top here he was testing his nailer out and they're already done but when we were moving this box around with the pallet jack the shelf uh, fell in on itself and you know that's what uh, that's what he gets for leaving crap stacked all over the place so my son is fascinated uh, with Victorian era um, design and he's collecting a lot of components for a house that he's building, like this beautiful farmhouse sink with a drain board and a nickel faucet. I don't think too many people would mind having that in a house, but how about a copper Burns ringer washer? Yeah, make your wife use one of these. Look at this thing. It is really, really cool in good shape too. Still motor driven. Uh, it does have a pump. So it will empty itself out and it will pump out to, uh, I believe it'll pump out to, you know, a, a, an overhead sink higher than, uh, higher than the outlet of the, of the washing machine. What else has he got? He's got this beautiful little parlor stove, which is all cast iron. And these typically had a cast iron smoke hood. There were two pipes coming up, but the smoke hoods uh, turn it from a you know $150 item to a $1,000 item in a, in, a, in a real hurry. Very ornate little stove. And behind it is the Westinghouse Automatic Flavor Zone Oven. This is an early electric range, four burners. One of them here, this is an original burner which is really cool. They all work. And the uh, broiler element and the lower element are heavy cast iron pieces that basically have ceramic baffles on them with the coils and they unplug and come right out. And so you can put new ceramic coils in there. 
And yes, he plans on putting this in his kitchen and cooking with it. Underneath, he's got a couple of uh, high tank style toilets. I believe one has a porcelain wall mount and one has a wood um, wood box with a copper soldered copper inner tank and so he's got two old style toilets for his house I keep referring to the larger saw that we're going to be swapping out the Rockwell for well it's under that you can see a little bit of it there and uh, that is actually the end of the outrigger that the tabletop rolls on. So the top starts about here, goes to back there. That's an eight foot 80 20 extrusion. And uh, the top is almost as long, it's probably seven and a half feet as that 80 20 extrusion. And then uh, here's the blade, 18 inch blade. So massive, massive saw taking up our whole shop. Helped my son do a test fitting of the hood of the Spitfire the other day and he's within about I don't know maybe a half inch of this thing closing. There's our engine. He's got his custom radiator intercooler in front of it. Crazy stuff. Still has to fit up the exhaust pipe on this side. And on this side he has the Injection pump, the fuel filter, I think that's about all there's room for over there. Also got to get you an update on the wood boiler, which is watertight. I tested it and uh, I'm accumulating replacement uh, insulation panels and um, I don't even know what you call these, but these are all open to the firebox and so there's insulation and then steel plates that go on top of that to uh, seal it. And then there's a sheet metal jacket that goes around the whole thing and a smoke hood um, bolts onto the back. So that's in here somewhere. Got it tilted because we were flushing it out, you know, you're filling it up with water and got all kind of mud and sediment out of it from the hydro test. Well, I hope that uh, was, a, was a little bit of a preview for the week. It's better than no video at all, but I, I know it's not much, so you know, stick with me. So we're going to still get back on the, the lathe parts, the uh, front drive components for the, my son Spitfire, and i got to get the Quincy up and running more consistently with that new VFD. Uh, if nothing else, I know my other VFD that I have on the, the IV stand that I roll around that will run it and it will run it uh, consistently. Same rating, so I could swap them out as long as the new VFD will start all of the motors, particularly the knee motor on the k and I could use that one on the, on the inverter stand. Even though they're different brands, they have the exact same case, so the mounting feet are exactly the same, but the uh, I.O. board on the inside is different, so you know, I, they must use some components interchangeably from all of those manufacturers over there. But still need to source one for the uh, table saw. I might just try out like a three kilowatt. I have a three kilowatt VFD for the table saw. And if I, you know, start it up and don't load it too heavily, you know, that's good for about, you know, three horsepower, four horsepower. It should be plenty for what I'm cutting over there with it. So uh, I may hook up a dedicated VFD onto that one as well. So. Uh, We'll see once I once I get it over there. Otherwise, it's it's hard starting on a uh, uh, you know rotary phase converter. I got a 15 horse rotary phase converter over there, and I can just you know line start it to that. It'll be running screaming at 
you know, 4,500 RPM or whatever it is. Uh, but uh, I kind of like the ability after setting up that throat plate to dial it back and used to run it at maybe 40 or 50 hertz. A lot quieter, still cuts beautifully. So, uh, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, that's, that's all for now for Engineers Workshop. Uh, we'll catch you again next week with another video. So uh, weather's getting beautiful. Enjoying the outdoor uh, activities and the weather, opening up the pool, all kind of stuff to do. So enjoy yourselves. Uh, catch you next week. Until then, as always, stay safe.